Hello, I'm Nova, editor at the Left Press, and welcome to the first of many TLP People's Voice panels. Today, I have two guests who will introduce themselves in just a moment. And in this episode, we will be attempting to define leftism and explore its themes as a movement. First, we have uh, Caligan from Tumblr. If you just... Hello, my name is Chris Duda. Uh, while I'm a corporate drone to pay the bills, I am a local actress in Denver, Colorado with the Obscene Courageous Acting Troupe. We have a workshop production coming up next week called Kink Meme. Uh, if you'd like more details on that or just want to bother me online, you can find me on both Tumblr and Twitter with the handle name Kelagon, like Nova mentioned, K-E-L-A-G-O-N. Thank you. And uh, cultural Christophism from Tumblr as well. Oh, well, the whole thing. I didn't, I didn't prepare that much. Um, what's up? I'm cultural dash Christophism. My name is Christoph. Um, I run a YouTube channel called Broadway Radical, where I talk about musical theater as it relates to leftist politics. And I also have a SoundCloud called um, Christoph Reads Communism, where I read basically leftist texts. I've done like The Conquest of Bread. I just finished up the kind of uh, Communist Manifesto. I just read them in sort of a, an animated sort of way and a lot. So, well, I want to thank you both for being here today. All right. So in this episode, we will be discussing um, what defines leftism, its themes, and, um, you know, basically what it's about as a movement. Um, to begin with, I think there's a real problem in... Um, mixing up liberalism and leftism in general. Um, and it's really perpetuated by the right in a huge way. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think that a lot of the confusion between liberals and the left, or as I like to call it, the center and the left, is the real lack of understanding of what left actually is. Because if you had, because what our, okay, our education on, on socialism, communism, anything in that direction is Animal Farm that we get in high school. And there's this very <laughs> American conception that it's just like, all right, all those people, that's just big government and pigs standing on two feet. That, like and like that's that's just it. That's all they get. Marxism and it's like it's either <laughs> right, it's like Marxist dictators or you know gay marriage. <laughs> that's that's like the the two things that you get. And Krista. Um. So we have we do have the liberal and left. I, think, I like you saying it specifically being the liberals being the moderates, um, which I think almost still reflects how you have that confusion with, because it winds up being all about the certain coalition we wind up stuck in. Um, championed is the wrong word because it gives them too much credit, but led by the Democrats trying to mm -hmm. bring together liberals and left, which is generally a good thing, though I, I, I know you both can like right off the top of your head instances where it's not necessarily as quite as good for specific instances, but no, I, moving towards... I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, moving towards average goodwill in, in politics, it still isn't too bad that it winds up looking more liberal than left, but, yeah. of course, it's an important distinction to have the two different. Yeah. Well, um, uh, personally, I think it, it's definitely about a kind of historical erasure of anything left of Keynesianism. You know, there, there's even like the McCarthyite, uh, like how they really pursued um, both Democrats and leftists as if they were the same thing. It's almost, um, you know, it's smearing both of us because it, it, it kind of muddies the water on, on what a leftist is while also turning it into pejorative to use against 
liberals who stray too far from um, the the mm -hmm. sort of Republican Democrat coalition, you know, uh, general platform. Mm -hmm. um, but in America has like sorry, the like America has specifically like a a long history of repressing leftist actual leftist movements violently. So and we don't have this the sort of cultural um, heritage tied to like you know like our history as they do in certain countries in Europe, particularly like Germany. Yeah, and there is a, a certain kind of uh, material disruption, you know, like uh, the the state in general and, and also capital destroys our organization, so there's no lineage. Um, do you have any <laughs> thoughts? Sorry. That's interesting to see if each each actual leftist coalition forming that's specific to this cause being dismantled before the next one arises, but almost like a phoenix, it's it's coming from the ashes, so if you recognize it as, you just need to, I guess we need to have the self-awareness to recognize earlier failed attempts as part of what the growing movement is, so we don't lose that heritage. No, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. And, and there is a, I, I think there's a, a balance to be struck, because there's also getting lost in the whole history of things, so that, you know, modern communists and socialists and so on who bought into any number of theories they have problems with each other based on history um even though in the modern day you know there really hasn't been a recent time in which marxist leninists have really attacked anarchists for instance um so like it becomes a kind of um where, whereas it does connect us with a, a, a historic identity, it does also kind of create further infighting. Um, I don't know where it's going with that, but good point. I think there's a real, um, there's a real issue again in America with just the left having any identity, um, kind of what we were saying with the erasure is that if you don't have, just like um, we're sort of falsely divided into Democrat, Republican, leftists in America don't have a an identity for people to identify with, even though there are many people who I think would agree with the tenets of leftism on a on broad or in general or in a specific sense if we we really need uh to emerge as our own identity sort of what the alt-right has done with like libertarian because you can you can say now you can point to all right libertarians are a different group outside of the Democrat, Democrat, Republican binary that we can point to on the right side. So I think we need some, obviously, I don't think a major U.S. political party is really what the communist, you know, like leftism is, is going for, since that's not our ultimate goal, but like we need that sort of identity, that sort of um, you know, badge that we can put on ourselves. And I think the Greens are trying to be that, but they fail so miserably. They become a very... Yeah. Uh, I think the... the green... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, I didn't have much to say. I think... Oh, okay. I think the, the Greens might be suffering from the same problem almost any organization coming from the left faces when trying to emerge um, in current standards because it's so based upon individualism it, even libertarianism is based upon certain individuals rising to large potentials so they become the leaders they become the thought leaders and the ones that everyone's are looking to and that's successful for right libertarians republican democrats because it still works capitalist frameworks are very much about individual success as opposed to group yeah. cohesion 
And so for us to emerge as a strong coalition, we have to do it somehow without leaders, which, you know, oh, is, a, is a difficult agree. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I do, I do um, identify as an anarchist personally. So I, I definitely agree that, and, and I think it, it creates a sort of security in the group too, because if there's no leader, there's no one who can be assassinated, jailed. You can't throw us all in jail. And we do have, um, you know, I have a whole theory to, it, it, it's a, it's not my original theory, but um, I, I refer to it as node theory. It's sort of um, the, a simplification of human connections so that every um, entity can be um, thought of as a node. So organizations can be nodes or a human being, or you could even look at the organs in a human being as nodes with connections to each other. Uh, and so everything's defined by, um, you know, these hubs, nodes that are connected um, in a kind of web. Uh, and so um, in, in this theory, uh, a bad node is one with intentions to harm the group. And it only becomes a danger when it's able to kind of encircle other, um, you know, isolate and encircle members of the group in order to try to bring them into alignment with themselves and sort of um, break the, the uh, distributed structure down and reform it into a hierarchical one. Um, and so that's the real danger, I think. The, 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 the part where we've been... Um, sort of undone before it, it is in a balance between um you know uh allowing a certain measure of privacy versus um you know uh allowing abuse you know i i don't know exactly <laughs> sorry I don't think I quite phrased that right. Um, sort of the, the group cooperative identity versus a sort of in, um, trying to turn people into these hyper-individualists underneath a, uh, you know, the, the same as the capitalist structure, but, you know, rebranding it as leftist or even anarchist. So with okay, so using your using the, the theory of representing with the nodes, um, and I'm seeing like your bad nodes creating tree graphs as opposed to just sort of spider web networks, which is what we I guess where we would prefer towards. Um, is sorry, what the question was. Um, so it, actually, I guess that is it. So are trees then the the bad nodes in this example, um, and also. Is a number of connections you have on each node important? So I was saying with the particular individuals creating, um, having more presence, being more advantageous towards right or ideologies, mm -hmm. um, does it does it need to be some kind of control on how many edges each node has, or is the idea that every single node would eventually be connected to every node? I, I think um, the, there's an importance in redundancy, making sure that one node has multiple connections to various sources so that, you know, um, it's not sort of, because in a hierarchical structure you have above and below, but in the, this kind of horizontal structure you have just around you, your peers, you know, and <clears throat> having more peers means having, you know, access to information so people can't take advantage of, you know, um, uh, mis disinforming you, misinforming you. Um, more resistance to manipulation because you have an alternate reality to turn to. You have someone who supports you, you know, um, among your peer group, hopefully. That's what I'm talking about, though, in, in bad nodes encircling, is that they cut off good nodes and they actually sort of, um, through this indoctrination process, turn them into a bad node themselves. Um, and it usually has to do with... Um, the same thing we see in, um, you know, uh, 
CIA's uh, studied tortures, you know, psychological tortures, um, uh, going back all the way to kind of these, um, you know, you traumatize people and force them to dissociate and then kind of implant um, what you want them to think mm -hmm. and punish them for not thinking that way. And it slowly retrains them into a kind of, um, you know, someone who will do the same to their peers. And so we have a whole system of that right now. Uh, it, it It's the reason that, you know, people at the very bottom are so just breaking down and, you know, they're, they're not able to handle the stress of everybody above them, crushing them. <laughs> I, sorry, I got carried away, kind of stole the mic. No, you're good. That, that was your show. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so I was thinking of just general math uh, graph theory and thinking of um, the difference between networks and trees, which even you can take any network and you can pick it up by a single node. And if you think that like each of the things having weights responding to gravity, you can sort of make it into a tree with um, a single node at the top of the hierarchy. Um, but in the subgraphs, there are things which are more tree this is maybe stretching for me to say, but there are things which seem more tree-like because you have one node branching out into the others and connecting in in, in that way um, rather than things being more connected to each other. So that, that's what I was wondering about the distinction between. Um, oh, right. So uh, basically what, what um, defines a bad node is that it intends to take advantage of the system without contributing back to those it takes advantage of. It's parasitic. And um, it creates a system in which it can thrive by being parasitic. It even, uh, in the same way, uh, a kind of, um, you know, in, in an ant colony, for instance, that, that fungus, cordyceps, I think that's how it's said, um, that hijacks the nervous system of the ant in order to try to... Um, you know, colonized more ants. And that, that would be considered a bad node. It's transformed the ant into a bad node, which will infect more and create a system in which the cordyceps can um, thrive and its host, you know, is um, suffering for it. And it's the same way, for instance, with the ruling class. You know, they're, they're siphoning from us, but we're not benefiting from them. So, are, are we, okay, so bringing it, um, like I said, back to the discussion, is it, are we, are we naturally ants and good nodes, um, and then only by these external pressures are we, or do we see people becoming bad nodes and contributing further to moving towards the right, or are some people bad nodes just to begin with, I guess, is a way, kind of a way of saying it. I think it, it might be a um, byproduct of ideology. I, and it also is, it is according to, uh, you know, it's relative to who you're, you know, who you, you consider to be, you know, in the system and what system you want. Like, for instance, you know, being an anarchist, I want an anarchistic system. So a bad node to me is anything that under, uh, undermines that within uh, anarchistic groups. Um, so, but for instance, to a fascist, I'm a bad node because I'm trying to um, undermine his own goals and the goals of his organizations. Um, or um, to, <laughs> for instance, a Turk, I'm a bad node. And so it, it is relating to who you, you know, what you want, really. And I think that's that has to be the basis of, um, or not has to, but I, I think it would be a good basis of a, a sort of, um, if you want to call it a left morality or a left ethics, is, you know, not whether it's right or wrong, but whether you want to live in a society where that's okay. Um, 
you know, and that's sort of an, a, a, an aesthetic thing. It's what do we want our society to look like? Mm. I really feel like I'm hogging the microphone here. That's <laughs> because you're saying fun things. <laughs> yeah. We're just listening. <laughs> I think... Um, making me blush. Stop in here too. <laughs> Uh, I think to apply what you're saying about the whole node theory to um, a more on a more practical level as as we go about our day to day, I think it's important to create um, to actively create the sort of systems that are not hierarchical. I mean, that's that's kind of our whole thing uh, as as anarchists to create organizations, even though you know a couple people may uh, lead it, may start it, may get it going, that their official distinction, uh, you know, this is like, boards will have like, that. there's a president, there's a CEO, there's and so on. Or if, even if you do have distinctions, not that, you know, they're, none of them are above each other. Mm -hmm. I think in a more... Uh, in my sense, that's the thing that uh, we as, as leftists need to be just cognizant of, that you have to avoid this sort of draw of, mm. of, of individualism, of yeah. climbing ranks, like, ah, I'm going to be the most powerful, like, anarchist leader. Like, no, that's not what we do. <laughs> and I think the ANCAPs have that so backwards. They, uh, you know, I, um, my my own theory of the vanguard that has you know in, in a more uh, anarchist sense is that it's more the people who are acting right now who are on the front lines of any issue uh, and they're the vanguard because they're the ones on the front you know it, it's just it's not that you um and you don't stay the vanguard um it, and it's relative to what issue you're working on so like for instance, movement for Black Lives or Black Lives Matter could be seen as the vanguard in the new civil rights movement. Um, and, you know, so you have those groups that you should, I think, if you're on the front, look to to say, you know, what are they doing? What have they done? And, you know, uh, what information do they have? Uh, so sort of without uh, subjugating yourself to others, sort of taking examples and seeing what works and bringing that forward. So kind of um, uh, a, a more role-based than hierarchical and more uh, solidarity-based than, um, uh, you know, subservient. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good stuff. It's, it's interesting you bring up um, Black Lives Matter because that's actually, their organization, or at least the root of the organization, is a really good example of a coalition that forms without an, an intentional leader. Um, mm -hmm. Now, many people who are leaders very quickly emerge oh, yeah. in the Black Lives Matter movement. Like, for instance, um, DeRay Mackerson. I, I think I see. Name. Yeah, I was actually about to get to uh, DeRay, because DeRay, because he is such a good orator and writer, wound up being, the and, and because he was so involved, became the, one of the most public figures of the movement. Um, but he harped on for a very long time that it was all communal driven. It's all about, um, it was very, very much a movement from many, many people bring, coming together to do it. Um, yeah. And he wasn't necessarily leading it, just representing it. Yeah, so um, he became kind of a spokesperson. Um, <laughs> and only through people's uh, support of him and his message. Right. Um, which, you know, is sort of, um, if, if, you know, it, you're going to use the word authority at all, that is the legitimate authority, is one of, you know, authorization by one those you're representing. Um, I don't know. Sorry. There we go. What's interesting, though, is that you still it still winds up tending towards republic and democratic type systems, even if the person is someone who is 
a natural leader of that movement and supported by people who they are representing even before they were elected, um, they still wind up being a person representing and yeah. it, propagating it, the system. It's, a sim of it's the like a simplification of, you know, the general will. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not going to capture all the detail and nuance since it is just one person standing for millions. I meant that as an agreement. Um, but uh, uh, I, I had something I wanted to, to say about that. I think that's an interesting and unique challenge that the left has is um, having leaders with that while our main um, our ideology being against hierarchy, it, it's very easy for, for basically all other forms of political thought because your 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 um, your end goals, your your victories are very clear. All right, Republican get a Republican uh, elected to office, mm -hmm. Democrat get a Democrat elected office. We don't really have like, okay, get a leftist, you know, elected to office. That's not that's not our end goal because yeah. because our entire ideology revolves around being outside of that system. It's very hard to you almost have to create the system from outside yeah. while like trying to dismantle it. So and and those attempts are always under attack too. Um, and also, um, when, when they can't be destroyed, are often um, sort of incorporated into the, the system itself. Um, I, you know, for instance, like, um, well, I'd say a lot of LGBT community um, organizations have uh, become this to a major degree. Um, more about how we can you know, how we can live in capitalism and uh, arguing for the value of our lives in this system, you know, like the market value of our lives. Um, and rather than, you know, the original kind of star, um, you know, uh, uh, street transgender um, action resistance, I think. Uh, you know, it, it's all, it was all very revolutionary and, you know, to, to a major degree, what did that to us was the AIDS crisis and how Reagan refused to do anything about it. And we had to do everything. Yeah. That sort of action we were forced to take. Hmm? What's that? Uh, just, that's, you know, that was just, um, there's, uh, there's a sort of interplay between um, your role in society as, you know, as an individual, as a movement, as it relates to the society, because I think the further out from the, the norm, uh, if we call it that, the further, the, the easier it is to have more radical beliefs. So when, the LGBT movement was just starting, um, and there was no acceptance of it. When you're completely out of the public um, favor, it was very easy to also adopt radical ideals because they were just as likely to be included as your personal identity. Now, the sort of flip side that we've gotten now with the sort of liberal um tolerance that we've gotten is that the the movements have had to die down in intensity just mm -hmm. to survive and i can't i don't think anyone you can fault anyone for just doing you know you can oh, form so you so. can live yeah it, so. it is um it is just uh lgbt people um you know just uh adapting to the current conditions to try to survive and i don't fault anyone for that well except for the people who make that necessary <laughs> right 
I wonder if it's, I wonder where it coming from, and it's possibly, probably, a uh, combination of the two, where is it the, the, basically the liberal people saying, you can come to the table, but only if you calm down, um, or is it that we're, because of the system that's in place, the general populi doesn't, don't recognize the value of people until we have someone who is some kind of icon or celebrity or, you know, athlete um, saying, oh, you know, but I'm part of that community. And they go, oh, you're one of us too, I guess. Um, so I, I wonder how much of it's coming from each side. I, I think uh, in, um, in general, it's the kind of uh, celebrity sort of, it is a process of assimilation to to have this kind of celebrity uh, and also a measure because first it has to be safe for them to come out to, so they won't lose their job or at least safe that they won't lose their life um, and so that that's a measure of tolerance but it's also a measure of assimilation uh, because they're part of this kind of um, you know very heterosexual cis normative kinds of institutions you find um, outside of the LGBT and sometimes inside the LGBT. Um, um, and so it, it's kind of a combination of a drift that way with that being kind of a signal flag and also, you know, you can join us, we won't, you know, kill you, throw you in jail. And it also adds to the kind of straight liberal tolerance because they can say, well, so and so was gay, and they made my favorite movie, so I guess it's okay. Right. Oh. Their tolerance is very motivated for selfish reasons. Oh well, yeah, it is entirely about the benefit to um, to capitalist society that a, a, a gay or you know a queer in general is. Everyone comfortable with the word uh, queer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, queer people in general. Um, lost my train of thought. Um, oh, it, it's about the the benefit that we can we can provide them. Like, uh, for instance, one of the arguments was with gay marriage that gay couples can adopt children. So take children out of the adoptee, uh, the the foster care system and such, and stop them from being wards of the state, you know, take the tax burden off, um, and individualize that, that, um, that cost. Cause I think that is at the basis of capitalist individualism is trying to individualize the cost of everything, take it off of, um, you know, uh, communal systems so that eventually, you know, the, the rich don't have to pay anything for us. Um, and that's sort of the, the idea behind the flat tax too, because if they institute a flat tax and then give a bunch of tax credits, then uh, rich people won't be paying anything. Or mm -hmm. at least, I believe that this whole process of privatization is a kind of, um, you know, feudalism. Yeah. A few disconnected thoughts there, but. <laughs> It's interesting because you see so much of when you, you if you read conservative literature and theories and opinions, it's all coming from particular perspectives based upon that's like you were saying with net worth, which is such a disgusting term to begin with, but the concept of net worth and you making this incredibly market efficient system to work with those ideas. But it's interesting because what they want to, what, what commonly happens is instead of just examining the system for itself and seeing where its benefits lies, they take it as a doctrine to approach and to make these, to, to make it as efficient as possible instead of making it just an important theory. Um, and so you wind up with them ignoring basic people's rights just because it's more efficient. Oh, um, God, yeah. That which is, too, is, which is too bad. The motivation between human rights violations is profit, mm -hmm. um, including uh, lots of the uh, the treaties that we had with Native Americans that we wouldn't, you know, encroach on their lands anymore or anything like that. It was usually 
the discovery of an important resource that had us just sweep them off somewhere else. Um, and, it, and it's a continuing pattern. Is We go where the resources are and we take them. Yeah. And that's, that's um, really the real evil of capitalism is that you don't have to be... It's not like, you know, you don't, you don't have to be a movie villain like, oh, I just happen to hate gay people or indigenous <laughs> yeah. people. It's like, it's, it's, it's uh, a very pragmatic um, viewpoint. It doesn't, it doesn't care. You, you know, you can be a capitalist and your, your views on any of these oppressed groups really don't matter as an individual because the system that you're propagating and yeah, you're rolling that. The, the, yeah, your whole role in it, your whole, the way that you do things is designed to oppress them. You don't, yeah. and you don't even have to mean to. Oh, it's like, um, you know, uh, you can be a good cop, but you're in a bad system. So you're, you know, you're not, you're not really a good cop. Your effect's not good, even if you're trying to be that good force. Um, exactly. And, you, you know, that it, one light that works in twinkle lights in a tree is still broken if one of the other lights is broken. <laughs> it's one of those things. <laughs> That's such a good metaphor. Um, oh, um, but I think also there's this kind of ubiquitous excuse sort of taken as an axiom that people just do what's best for them. People just, and that, that means, you know, capitalists just do what's best for them, um, which is worst for all of us. And if you apply that to what we do in striking and, um, you know, protests, um, riots and such, uh, so on. And, and, um, you know, it, that's us doing what's best for us. <laughs> you know, trying to overthrow the system, but they say that doesn't count. Um. Just wrong. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I sp spare time for fun study economics, and the principle that if you want to take the concept, the idea, which they do, they want to take the idea that people do what's best for them, um, you know, and whatever creates the most value in their life. If someone and if groups of people are are things are things that are so bad for them, which they are, particularly in the cases where people are, you know, protesting and and, and or rioting, um, rioting being of course often the worst case scenario, ignoring sports games, um, they're doing it because they, according to the economic systems that the conservatives are applying. Um, they're doing it because their, their life does have such little incentive to not do that. It's actually because of the gamble that you get by being an advocate of these causes, it's technically more valuable for them to do that. So, and this is all within the framework of, let's pretend that the, this entire framework is correct. It's not. Um, but even that it has a cause. Okay, no, if they're protesting, you need to be paying attention to them because that is what's best for them according to your system. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, and um, really that breaks down to the idea that people do what's best for them as soon as sort of, um, you know, that the kind of psychological wage of things can overcome that um, perfect personal interest, you know, because people don't have perfect knowledge for one. They don't know what's best for them. I mean, in general, they know kind of what they want, but they don't know how to do it in general. Um, and, and second, they have that whole, um, you know, uh, they have prejudices against these approaches of trying to break down capital in the state. And the, the third is, um, God, I'm losing focus. <laughs> Breaking down capital in the state. Um, oh, I was saying psychological wage, um. Yeah, basically, the the thing you were talking about with conservatives is like the the um, sort of jeez, I lost my train of thought here. 
No, I, I agree with you entirely. That, but like, cause I don't. I, I think I got what you're saying with mm -hmm. the where specifically a lot of their models break down um, partially in what's described with behavioral economics, and then there's uh, specifically psychological economics, which that has not been. There needs to be more study on that, honestly. Where mm -hmm. because of whatever deterrence a personal person might have, again, that they fail these overgeneralizing systems that try to predict human behavior. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that I think that's definitely, um, and it is a, a prod a product of individualism that they think they can look at every individual and they'll be somewhat the same. They'll have a basic human nature instead of being who they are in relationship with others. But I, I think um, at this point, we should do some closing remarks. No, you're good. Um, I would just say we, um, really good look at how and how we approach uh, uh, the movement, how we, and also that is the most important thing that we can do um, is to organize. And if we sort of make that our whole focus as a movement, rather than the liberal kind of trap of identity poli politics um, of just making about action, mm -hmm. more than, you know, more than electing a certain politician, more than demanding, you know, this movie have whatever sort of character, these very small Ah, all right. That was that was awesome. Cool. So okay. Featuring my stepmother. And anyway. Um uh, <laughs> like really, anyway, um we just need to, I would just say if there if there's one thing we can put out into the the matrix is here is that to to focus on on organizing above mm -hmm. all else. No, I think organizing right. is definitely a really important goal at this point. Um, do you have any closing remarks, Krista? I'll apologize a little bit for, because we, we it was a really good prompt we had uh, to talk about what is leftism, and then we kind of went off a different, oh, and lots of different tracks. I really enjoyed it. I think we, I think we had a, a great discussion. I really want to mm -hmm. thank you, you two for being here. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. So I guess to, I guess maybe pretend to address the central thesis though, um, based on what the conversation we had, the uh, a lot of what is the distinction between left besides just the historical context, which is uh, the historical context, maybe the one that's been most explored. Um, have, based on our conversation, I think maybe it's good to look at it as a framework of the system that both we want and the one we work with as uh, as leftists and specifically like uh, Christoph was saying with how we need to organize specifically instead of yeah. uh... sorry <laughs> didn't get a, I didn't have a good word to end a sentence with but oh no that's that's all right <laughs> I, I think I get well, what you mean well, that was much better than mine <laughs> <laughs> That concludes this People's Voice panel. I'd like to thank both my guests very deeply for being here, and all of our viewers. Tune in again in two weeks, when I'll have brand new guests, and we'll discuss leftism in history. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy our show, and check out our news site at www.leftpress.tk. That's www.leftpress.tk. Thanks for watching.